It's not just Trump that is connected to Chabad Lubavitch. Chabad Rabbi Berlazar is the chief rabbi of Russia. He is very close to President Vladimir Putin. The Jewish oligarchs at Putin's side are also the main financiers of Chabad Lubavitch. Jews control the wealth of Russia, and Chabad is a dominant force. They're not going anywhere. If this offends you, know that there are Russians who agree with me. Chabad can say whatever they want about Gentiles. Meanwhile, Putin is making it illegal to criticize them. A taxi driver in Russia was sentenced to 350 hours of community service for writing online that Jews dominate Russia and the world. Imagine what would happen if we were in Russia. Putin passed a law sentencing Holocaust deniers to five years in prison. Russia is virtually free of anti-Semitism. Putin is calling for Jews to emigrate to Russia. Jews destroy your country. Why would Putin be welcoming them into Russia? That's because they're not a threat. They've already destroyed Russia with Marxism and took it over 100 years ago. It's the West which they are currently destroying with cultural Marxism so that they can take it over. As Putin's rabbi Beryl Lazar puts it, the West lacks mutual respect, unlike Russia. Putin was Israel's person of the year in 2015, despite working with Syria and Iran. Reuven Rivlin, the president of Israel, says that Putin is loyal to Israel's security. If you read the comments on RT's videos, you might actually believe that Putin is against Israel. But Putin's rabbi, Beryl Lazar, says that ties with Israel have never been closer. Israel has a simple message. We don't put all our eggs in one basket. We don't rely only on America. Putin is arming the Arab and Muslim states and working with Israel exactly as the Soviet Union was doing. He's profiteering from the war in Syria. He's not there because he wants to defend Christianity. That's literally KGB propaganda. Putin supported Israel during their 2014 bombing campaign of Gaza. Chief Sephardic Rabbi of Israel, Yitzhak Yosef, said to Putin, According to the Jewish tradition, your leadership is decided by the Kingdom of God, King of the world, and therefore we bless you. Blessed is the one who gave of his glory to flesh and blood. The Sanhedrin contacted Breaking Israel News to announce that the election of Trump, who has promised to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, coupled with Putin's expressed desire for the temple to be rebuilt, prompted the Jewish court to send a letter offering the two the opportunity to act as modern-day Cyrus figures, non-Jewish kings who recognize the importance of Israel and the temple. An Israeli bystander called out in Russian Welcome, President Putin. Putin approached the man who explained the importance of the Temple Mount and the Jewish Temple. Shadre Sharadin, an Orthodox Hebrew news site, reported that Putin responded, That's exactly the reason I came here, to pray for the Temple to be built again. Putin's on our side, says Beryl Lazar. Chabad Lubavitch, who is pushing to rebuild the Temple in Jerusalem, wields tremendous influence in both Russia and Israel. When Ben-Gurion announced plans to rule the world from Jerusalem, calling for a world alliance and no more wars, that always included Russia. Some people will say, oh, but the Jewish media is against Russia. That media isn't pushing Israelis to go to war with Russia. It's pushing Americans to fight a war that they are not going to win. As you heard earlier, the rabbis want a large war. When the dust settles, Putin will be fine. Whereas the United States will be bled dry just like Germany after World War I and the Treaty of Versailles. Israel will take its place as the new superpower. There's so much more to this. We'll get into it in part two in the future.